welcome to the old shed. Um, it's about a hundred years since I posted anything on this YouTube channel, but I have been watching an enormous amount of craft videos over the last year or so, during lockdown particularly, and I have just loved seeing so many different people sharing the things that they're making, showing us their progress, some of the problems they might be having and how they are solving those problems um, and seeing their finished projects. And it's been so fun. And also during that time, I have been making a lot more than I previously had time to, doing a lot more of all sorts of things. And there will certainly be a little bit of everything on this channel. So I thought I would just begin this week by showing you some of the things I'm working on at the moment, one or two things that I very recently finished, uh, and a couple of things that are in the works. And then in future weeks, hopefully I'll have some progress to keep you updated with. Um, there might be chance to talk about things like some of this random artwork of mine uh, back on the wall here, might do a little garden uh, video one week, all sorts of things. So we'll see how that goes. But for the moment, I'm going to talk about the things that I am working on. So first thing is some knitting. Um, I like knitting socks. I, every year, uh, almost every year, uh, enter a sock knitting competition in March called Sock Madness. Um, it's on Ravelry, but if you can't access Ravelry, uh, particularly at the moment with the, the accessibility issues, there are ways of entering it and getting the patterns without having to access the Ravelry website. You do, I think, still have to be a member of the Sock Madness group. So you might have to go on once for five minutes or get someone else to do it for you for five minutes. But then after that, you can arrange to have everything else done via email, I think. So oh, I just noticed these are slightly coming off the needle. Um, so I do that. I did, in fact, this year I had a design in the competition and I'm wearing them. Maybe I'm not gonna try and lift my foot up right now to show you, but I will show you those perhaps uh, later on in the video uh, when we have a little wander around. Um, but this year the patterns have been really difficult. So I did do the qualifying pattern and I did enjoy it, but it had beads in it and I just don't love beads in my socks. So at the end, I um, took various people's advice and smashed the beads so I could get them off the knitting. I didn't really listen very carefully to the advice for that and I ended up smashing the beads and also then cutting through the knitting. And I'd been using yarn for those socks which I had previously used for a different project and unwound and it was already that you know there were quite a lot of knots and it was in quite a lot of pieces and by the time it had the beads smashed through it those socks didn't really make it through. So then I had the round two socks, which I knitted and they're lovely. And then the round three socks came out and they had, oh, I can't remember, like a hundred beads in each sock. And I was like, do you know what? I'm just not gonna do that. I don't want them. I wouldn't wear them. I don't want to go through the trauma of destroying them again. So I stopped, but I do need some more socks in my drawer and I wanted some to be knitting. So I've just been sort of playing with this little pattern. It's, um, uh, just different elements that I was sort of putting together. So I don't know if you can see, I don't know if I've got anything that will help you see. Mm, maybe this, Let me just put a little card in there and then maybe you'll be able to see a little bit of the pattern that'll work on the uh, ribbing. So I've done, it's a two by two rib, but then every few rows, I've just done a thing where I have um, uh, knitted two stitches together and then increased in the hole and it makes these little holes that you can see uh, across the thing. So I thought that was quite fun. Um, and then I found a little lace pattern, a little sort of leafy lace pattern to do just down on either side. I'm not carrying it on on the foot. I wanted to try a different kind of heel. Um, I've got a book called The Sock Knitter's Workbook, Handbook, something like that. I'll put a link below. Um, and this is uh, one way that they suggested doing a rounded heel. And I really enjoyed this actually. And I, I definitely think I want to use this kind of heel again. It's a little bit like an afterthought heel, except as you can see, you don't do it afterwards. Um, and then it's got a really fun way of um, closing it up at the end. So you get a slightly more rounded thing. Whereas sort of if you did a traditional short row heel, you'd get straight and then a sort of straight line across uh, the top here where you can see this has got a little bit of a curve on it. 
So uh, that, and then I'm just doing a plain foot, but isn't this fun? I'm using, this main yarn is a West Yorkshire Spinners yarn. It's from their flower range and I can't remember which flower it is, but isn't that pooling really prettily? I'm hoping it's gonna zigzag all the way down the foot, but we will see. Um, I bought that, can't remember which shop I bought it from, but it was on sale just a couple of weeks ago for like, two pounds a ball or something like that which is a really good deal for West Yorkshire Spinners yarn so if that's still on sale I will look that up and, and put the link um in the notes below there weren't loads of colors in that really cheap price but this one and you know there were a few others and they were pretty um so yes I thought that was very good so I'm enjoying that um this is the first sock I'm gonna try and make myself do the second sock the same as I'm knitting I'm having ideas about a different sock I want to design. But if I do, I think that might be a sock that I use um, and submit to Sock Madness again, in which case I won't be able to show it until this time next year anyway. So that's my sock that's knitting. Now, next uh, work in progress. This is, this is a big one. This is the Sheepshers. 2020 crochet along I mean this is not going to fit on the camera I'll just show you bits of it d'histoire naturelle blanket um it's knitted in um knitted it's crocheted in sheepshire's uh color crafter yarn I bought a kit from Holly's haberdashery it was about 33 pounds for the kit for the whole blanket it is acrylic um but it's really nice acrylic it's very similar I would say in quality to the stylecraft special dk um, that I've used before for other things. Um, so it's nice to use, it feels nice, but obviously then you can chuck it in the washing machine when you are finished. And it's inspired by this blanket, the Natural History Museum in France. And so let me just show you from the, the sort of middle out. So this middle section is obviously sort of inspired by, there we go, flowers. Uh, it's very pretty. So you start crocheting in the round and then you make that into a square and you add these little corners on, which she likes to think of, the designer likes to think of as hedges, which is quite fun. And then you make your square into, this is where it's gonna start getting really too big, an octagon. So you do this bit coming up, up here and then back down. And in that octagon section, you add in the bees and the butterflies, and those are all crocheted in as you go, although, um, I think the pattern does call for you to go back and add a little French knot on the butterflies. I got a little bit carried away and I did a bit more embroidery on the butterflies. So my butterflies are all slightly different from each other, you can see. And I also did some embroidery over the bees um, to make them stripy and a bit more bee-like. So that's what you do there. And then you've got this round with the balls. And then the next section, you finally, uh, you make it back into a circle. Do you make it back in a circle? Oh, no, that's right. The next section, you do make it back into a circle. And that's when you end up with this leaf pattern. I'd never done this sort of crochet before, but I really like it. Really effective. So you alternate colours every round, uh, the bright green and the darker green. But then you also use... Um, stitches that reach down over the rows to do these sort of front post, front post, I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, something like that, front post trebles and double trebles to create the leaf pattern on top. So you just work those, again, as you go around, as you're doing those lighter green rows, you're always, when you get to the leaf, going back and adding in the sort of next bit to bring it up. So that takes it back to a circle. Then, this was quite a scary bit, to make that circle back into a square, you make these corner sections. So you make four corner sections and you do this by making each of these little motifs individually. And then this really complicated sort of webby um, section um, to join them all together and end up back at a square. And I think it was a miracle, but I think I did end up with the right number of stitches at that point. These are inspired by some of the mineral geodes um, in the Natural History Museum in Paris. Then we come on to the next green section. So at this point, and from here on you're working the square, before you get to the green section, obviously I nearly forgot the best bit in the blanket altogether are the elephants. The pattern doesn't give you ears on the elephants, but um, 
there is a Facebook group and that's where you download the pattern. It's a free pattern, which is amazing. Um, you can download the pattern there and there's various people in different comment threads who've worked out different ways of adding on the ears to the elephants. And I just love those little secret elephants. Um, they are again crocheted in as you go. I think I might go back when I've finished and just reinforce it. So where the elephants are held on, I don't know if you can see um, there, it's, it's not particularly sturdily done. And I think I might go back and just sew the bodies of the elephants a bit more firmly to the blanket. Um, then we come to this next green section. You're working in a uh, square at the moment, these sort of arches. I can't remember what they were inspired by. And again, you've got some really nice texture here with stitches kind of reaching down in front and then the different greens behind. And then finally, I am on the last section. It was meant to be, what was it? A sort of two month knit along, eight, nine weeks, something like that. Crochet along, keep forgetting. Um, yes, and I got, I think I was sort of keeping up certainly as far as part three, and then I started part four. I did do part, maybe I did part four around about the time it came out, but then certainly part five and part six had to wait because it got to December and I had a whole lot of other things that I was doing and it sort of slightly sat on the back burner. I've not really been keeping up. And obviously by this age, it's really big. I would say it's already five foot wide. I haven't measured it, but I would guess it's five foot wide. And you're doing all four sides. So each round does take quite a long time at the moment. I've got about 15 rounds left to go. And some of them are, are pretty quick. Some of them, there's a lot of just chaining going on. And what we're doing here is we're using that same building in the front technique to make, these are going to be shells, these little bits where you can see there's a sort of triangular start to it. And it's going to come out, I think there's three layers to the shell. And then there'll be just a final little border. And that will be done. That'll be... I'll be really proud. It is by far the most complicated thing I've ever crocheted. Um, and it is brilliant. It's a beautiful pattern. There's various colorways that it comes in, in the Sheepshire's yarn, both um, in this color crafter, which is just acrylic, but there's also um, colorways for some of their other yarns. I think it's cotton. I wouldn't swear to that, but there's stone washed and river washed yarn. Um, that's quite a lot more expensive, but you can do that. And they, they have a slightly subtler uh, colour palette to them. Um, they're really beautiful. And the other thing is, the pattern is free, like I said, on Facebook, um, in the Sheepshire's Facebook group, which I can put a link to. But also, there are incredible videos, video tutorials by In A Nutshell Crochet. And she literally walks you through every stitch, if that's what you need. I mean, you know, when the round is, do a whole round of half trebles. She, you don't have to sit and watch her do every half treble in the round. She'll just do the corner bit, she'll do the half trebles and take you back to the corner. But every bit, and like for these webby sections where it's really complicated, you can literally follow her step by step and she'll show you exactly where you join the different sections and exactly how many you count. And some of the stitches are, you know, quite specific weird stitches that you might not have performed in quite that way before so again um if you do do it my top tip is make sure you download the file that is called tips and tricks tips and techniques something like that because it is not just tips and techniques it is first of all it is the pattern for the very first section so this whole little circle here comes in that first um, file. So if you just downloaded part one, you wouldn't have this cast on in the, the beginning section, which would be ridiculous. But it also gives you the key to all the different stitches that are used in the rest of the pattern and what the abbreviations stand for and stuff. So do make sure you get that. It comes in UK crochet terms and US crochet terms. It's been done by people all over the world. Um, everybody's blanket I just think is stunning. Um, and I'm really looking forward to mine being finished. I don't think I'm going to keep it. I don't really have another need need for another blanket in my life. It might be a present for somebody. It might be like a charity giveaway. I haven't quite decided. I'll just be really proud of, of finishing this, to be honest. So that's been going on for six months or so. The socks have been going on for about three days. 
Um, those are really my only two. Oh no, one more actual work in progress. Oh no, that well, there are more works in progress. I'm going to show you literally every work in progress in the house because that would be embarrassing. Um, but things that I'm actively working on at the moment. So this, this is quite different. I did say it was going to be a bit of everything, didn't I? This is a little mini sketchbook. And this is a project from uh, the weekly art class that I go to. And obviously weekly art class has not been meeting a lot. We met a bit in the set in the autumn when that was allowed. And then we've just started meeting again a couple of weeks ago. And one of the things we're doing at the moment, this is sort of homework, and then it's going to be preparation for next week's project, is we just had one of these little mini books. They are A6, I think that's right. They're really small, and we glued pages together. They're just notebooks, so the paper is not designed for art. So we glued pages together so that we had double thickness pages, so a little bit sturdier. And then the plan was that we would choose our own um, medium or technique that we wanted to use and do something every day for three weeks in these books and that would fill them up. So I chose collage. And actually what we did in the very first week back at class, we did some just playing with paint on acrylic paper. And at the end of class, I said to everyone, look, you know, if you're taking yours home, that's absolutely fine. But if anyone's just going to throw theirs away, because they were, you know, you can see a little bit of the sort of techniques we were doing, they were quite scrappy, then can I have them? And so I've got everybody's paper, because nobody really wanted to keep theirs. And I've been using those as the base for my collage. It's been a bit messy because on top of the acrylic paint, we also did some doodling with charcoal and the charcoal comes off. So what I have to do at the beginning of every collage session is wipe the painting with baby wipes and get off the surface charcoal and then it's not too bad. I also had this, which is obviously not um, acrylic paint. This is wrapping paper, but I really loved it and want to try it. Although actually it's not been nearly as fun to collage with as I thought it might. So uh, I'm sort of two thirds of the way through this. I'll just give you a little quick thing. So playing with circles. This was sort of really what I wanted to see with the, the wrapping paper there. Um, some sparkly washi tape, playing with sort of hiding bits of the images, still hiding, but here with a, obviously with a message. Here, seeing what sort of spectrum of colours we had and outlining it. Um, this is where I started to really enjoy it, doing um, layering up of just little pieces. I did a sort of background that had bigger pieces that covered the whole space and then layered up just picking sections with the right sort of colours. Same in this one, but in a different direction with a different colourway. Here I took strips that were more or less uh, even strips and I did, it's a sort of faux weaving where I've just stuck them down alternately, uh, horizontally and vertically. And I've just highlighted, I say highlighted, shadowed really a little bit of that with a bit of black pen. Let's hold that up and see if you can see that. Um, by this point, the book had started more or less falling apart, which is why it's got sellotape down the middle and as you can see it really is falling apart but that's fine it's a sketchbook I like the fact that I have to hold it together with a binder clip that makes me feel like a real artist um then I started playing again with that same sort of idea of laying little strips um but playing a little bit more with color and form so that's it's not based on a real flower but you certainly get the impression of flower I went back to the wrapping paper and the circle idea one more. I quite like that, but it's not really doing anything. This was a happy accident. This was supposed to have, this sort of started with a different idea and then ended up as this, and I kind of really love it. From the first idea, I got this sort of top section. And then I remembered that somebody had drawn these figures on their uh, painting. And I just thought, oh, well, I could use those to collage uh, the bottom part of that. Um, using up the scraps from the uh, collaging process, the bits that I cut out. Um, I really like that with that sort of outline. Um, here I want to start playing with texture in the collage. So these are not stuck down all the way. They have a, a sort of tactile quality to them, sort of overlapping scales. And then here, I don't know if you can see quite what I've done here. These really are the little tiny scraps left from cutting bits out. And um, years ago, I did a project based on a Japanese artist called, I'm going to get it wrong if I say it, I think it's Tsukimi Noda, Tsukumi Noda, something like that. I will look it up and put it below. And one of the things she liked to do in her art was, was pick up rubbish 
and use that in her art. And I um, did some samples based on using um, this uh, sticky back paper, sticky back plastic, to pick up rubbish where I was and um, display it. And I just thought that would be a really interesting way of doing collage. Um, it's much more um, dynamic and less controlled. The only control that I did do was where it had picked up one or two bits upside down. I did go back in and turn them over so they all had the paint showing. And that's where I'm up to in there. So I've just got a few more left to do and then we're going to finish that next week. So knitting, crochet, collage. I think those are all the things. Oh no, one more. I keep saying this and I, I like I promise you I'm not showing you all my works pros. But I'm just going to show you this one. I'm going to need to move the camera. So if that might make you seasick, uh, here's your moment for that. But let's see if we can just bear with me. Turn this around and show you here. So this is an embroidery piece. I can't really um, fix the camera in position there, so I'm sorry if it's a little bit wobbly. It's an embroidery piece from Nicola Jarvis. You can buy this printed fabric uh, from her website. She does these beautiful birds filled with patterns. That's her one of her signature things. Um, and I've just embroidered this one tiny little leaf here. So it's not a big start, but it is a start. And the thing I was really pleased about, I was, um, I've been doing a little bit of embroidery recently, which I haven't done for a while, and a bit of cross stitch as well. And I was finding, just sitting doing it on the sofa, I was struggling a bit with my back. And um, and I, you know, I'd sort of put this in a heap and I was like, I just don't know, I think it's gonna struggle. What I really want is a stand that will hold it. And I've been looking at um, the sort of lavery stands that people use and various things that you can get. And then I suddenly went, do you know, I think I have a stand in the back of the wardrobe. Um, and, and lo, I do have a stand in the back of my wardrobe. Um, this used to belong to my aunt. Um, and when she downsized into a very much smaller house, she decided to not take it with her. And she knew I did, you know, crafts and, and textile work and so on. So she asked if I would like it. Um, and it was in a box and it was a little bit tricky to put together. And I did have to get some new um, screws and bolts and things. Um, and it's not completely... I mean, it's a bit lopsided at this point because it's got something under one of the legs. Um, yeah, it's not completely even but it's very functional for what I want. I think I might need to have another go at putting the fabric on it. And I also invested, because I am old and struggling, in a um, magnifying lamp that I can use when I'm working on that. And that actually really does help. So I do want to make some progress on that. I do really enjoy that sort of embroidery. Um, and I haven't really done any for a long time. Um, so I was really pleased actually when I found that you could buy this because I don't need to buy a kit. I don't need to buy all the threads and the needles and the scissors. I have a lot of stuff. Um, but I was looking at designs and so many embroidery designs just seem to me either designed for the person who's never done this at all before. And that's fine. People need a place to start and a kit is a really great place to start because you know you'll have everything. You know you'll have the instructions. It's not that I think there shouldn't be beginner kits. But I, I do sometimes wish there were more things aimed at intermediate to advanced embroiderers. And I could design my own and I could find other designs and I could transfer them and I could do all of that work. But sometimes you don't want to have to do everything starting from scratch. Um, and actually, I just felt this was really perfect. Um, it doesn't come with instructions. It doesn't come with a thread chart. It doesn't come with anything. You can do whatever you want with it. But obviously you're not starting from a blank piece of um, linen. Uh, so yeah, so I do have some plans of different ways that I'm going to stitch parts of that. I love that actually some of it you, you could leave unstitched if you wanted to or you could outline parts but not feel like you've got to do full coverage over things. Um, and also you could obviously add stuff around the design as well if you wanted to. Um, so I think that is going to be fun and I think I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm mentioning it here because I want you to hold me accountable that I actually do it. Because I think it will easily become the thing that sits in the corner and doesn't get any attention. So that's that. Good. Um, I said I have one or two finishes that I want to show you. Um, this, I don't do loads of cross stitch. But I've done two cross stitch pieces since Christmas. Which is the first two I've done in forever. I did an Easter piece uh, which I sent to a, a friend of mine. 
um, if I can find a photo of it, I think I've got a photo of it, um, I will try and insert that so you can see it. Um, that was quite fun. It was, I found a really pretty little Easter thing um, and I wanted to change the sign so it was properly Easter rather than just, you know, spring. Um, so I took out the bunny and I put in um, the little empty tomb and the, the crucifixes and so on. So uh, I enjoyed doing that a lot. And I enjoyed doing it so much that I ended up looking for another cross stitch to do and I came across um, this designer and I will certainly put a link to their Etsy shop. Um, I really, really liked um, their choice of words and their choice of fonts. Um, theirs are all sewn up and their samples are all sewn up in like neutral colours which clearly aren't going to go in my house. I mean you can only see a little corner of my house here but I think you can see it's not a neutral house. Um, so I chose my own colours and I really really enjoyed stitching this a lot. I was like I'm just going to do 20 minutes a day. No I'm just going to do one thread a day. It doesn't have to be a big deal. And that's what I did like for the first evening. I'm like it's fine I've done 20 minutes put it down. Next evening I'm doing my 20 minutes. I'll just do another hour. And then the next day I was like I'm just going to keep going. So I finished it in three days. I mean, it's obviously, it's not a huge um, amount of stitching, but nonetheless, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, and I just finished it in this hoop and then it sits on my wall. And I'll show you at some point the um, the wall where it sits and it's basically got a lot of round things, not all cross stitch, this is the only cross stitch, but a whole lot of things. And it sits in there really beautifully. So I was really pleased with that. Um, and then I meant to do this at the beginning, actually, was just talk about what I'm wearing. So last year, after lockdown started, one of the things I found was the most soothing was to be able to go out to my craft uh, hut in the garden. I'll give you a tour of that at some point. And just not listen to news, not have internet out there and do dressmaking. And I liked that because a dressmaking project, very often the kind of things I do, you know, you can finish it. You can start and finish it in an afternoon or an evening. Or if it does take long, it's only a few days. Um, and so I did a lot of uh, dressmaking in the last year and I have plans to do more, as you will see in a moment. Um, so this, anyway, this uh, hoodie started life as a sundowner hoodie by made by Jack Smavlik. I love the uh, hood. Um, her version does not have... A front that opens it's just a pullover so I added in this zip section and I think I mean I slightly widened the front here and then I didn't widen the hood sufficiently to come all the way around I'm fine with it opening like this it's not perfect but it's fine um but also in the pattern she's really clear she's like you can have piping um I'm gonna stand up and show you you can have piping here or you can have pockets here but you can't have both and I was like I think you can I want both uh, and as you see I have got piping that goes around the pocket and goes around it's got really fun um you can't see this curved seam so this is the sort of curved seam and this is the back piece that comes around and this is the front piece and then the pockets sit in that seam and if you are careful about how you do it you can also pipe those seams so I really like this and I've worn it quite a lot the only thing I was slightly disappointed about I bought the fabric online and I think it said indigo and it's a bit grayer than I like I think if I'd seen this in person I might have been a bit mm, I don't know I was sort of hoping for something with a bit more denim blue um, dark denim blue but definitely more obviously blue and it's a little bit grey but on the other hand it has teal and yellow and sort of orangey pink stars and you know who doesn't love that so that's my uh, sundowner zipped ho hoodie and underneath do you know I have no idea what this pattern is last summer I was making a lot of jersey tops and I used several different patterns and I honestly have no idea it might be the Breton top from one of the sewing bee books, but I wouldn't swear to it. Anyway, and with this beautiful uh, cat print, tiger print uh, fabric. So uh, anyway, so those are the me made things I'm wearing because as I am filming, this is the 1st of May. And as we all know, that's me made May. So I'm wearing a, a homemade, I don't really like me made, wearing a homemade top and hoodie um, it's a bought skirt, it's just a denim skirt that I'm wearing that I've turned up and a pair of bought leggings because I can't be seeing the point of wearing leggings. But I am also wearing homemade socks 
And these are the socks that I designed for the Sock Madness competition this year. Uh, they have bobbles, they have a bit of lace, they have um, an eye of partridge two colour heel, they have a bit of cabling uh, on the front on the foot and they have a little bit of stranded colour work just at the bottom before the toe. Um, they're called 15s, you can't currently um, get them, you will be able to get them after the Sock Madness competition finishes probably next month. Um, the pattern is called 15s because it is the 15th year of Sock Madness and there are 15 bobbles. There is, I don't know if you'll be able to see this, the lace pattern, no you really can't see it, um, has a 15 in the middle of it in sort of knits and pearls. It was quite difficult to get that to work and it's quite difficult to pick up on camera but anyway it does say 15 there and there are 15 repeats of the lace pattern all together you get four uh in the round and you get three lots of that so that's 12 and then the last round you just do it three times and that takes you up to 15. there are 15 repeats going down your heel flap um and I think there's also 15 repeats going across. I wouldn't swear to that, but I think there are. And then on the front, it's this sort of triangle of cables. Five cables, four cables, three, two, one, 15 cables. And of course, 15 dots around the bottom. I don't know if you've ever had 15s uh, where you do that thing of 15 digestive biscuits and 15 glacé cherries and whatever, whatever, and mix them all up. But that was my sort of inspiration. 15s should be lots of things all mixed up together. So it is a little bit of everything in this sock. And I just love it. I love the bobbles. I want all my socks from now on to come with bobbles, contrast colour bobbles. Yeah. So uh, those are all the things I was going to show you that I've made. And I just want to show you a few things uh, that have come in the post in the last couple of days, which may or may not get made into things sooner or later. So first are these things. I don't know if you know what these things are. Do you know what? I don't even know what they're actually originally designed to be, but I know what I plan to use them for. Um, to put around thread, uh, spools of thread to stop the ends coming up, please. I'll show you when I show you my craft studio um, I keep my threads in an old button cabinet that used to be in my grandparents' shop. So they're all lying flat in the drawers because the drawers are quite thin um, and they just end up in such a mess. So I'm really hoping that these can just go around them and I hope the drawers will still shut. I think they will and that will just keep everything a little bit tidier in there. I've also seen people using these really effectively. If you use not a frame like this embroidery frame where it's uh, the fabric is sewn to the frame, but one like a hoop or a cue snap or something like that, and you've got excess fabric, these work really well for holding your excess fabric out of the way and you just sort of wrap them up in this and it holds it in place. So they're really cheap. My bag came from Amazon. Uh, there are, oh, it doesn't tell me. I feel, I think there might be 60 in there and it was like a fiver, something like that. It did take a while to come. I'd slightly forgotten about them and then they arrived in the post. I was like, what's that? And they're like, oh, those are what... Those those things. I've no idea what they're actually called. Um, I will see if I can find the ones that I bought and put them uh, a link to them below. And then the last thing I have that I've bought recently is some fabric. So this is a sort of loose weave, um, stripey, uh, cottony kind of fabric that I plan to make a summer top out of. It is a little bit more transparent as you can see than I've been anticipating so I might need to think about whether I need to line uh, that or some of that but that should be okay. Um, I have a top that I made a couple of weeks ago. It's my I Cheated Facebook top because Facebook have been trying to advertise to me for months this really beautiful top, sort of a linen, loose linen top um, with a, a kind of ruffle around the hem and it's gorgeous but I'm like I'm not buying it from your, your dodgy Chinese website where the, what's going to arrive in the post will look nothing like the photo in the original I'm going to make it and so I made one um, and I really like it so now I've bought this fabric to try and make another one and I don't know if you can see it is quite difficult to see on the thing on um, so this this sort of wider stripe here um, that's a really loose weave and that's where it 
it does need lining. But on this narrower stripe, I don't think it's going to be able to pick up on it. There's like a sort of flower pattern. Maybe you can just see that. Um, and it, it's kind of a... Um, I want to say like a jacquard pattern. It's it's woven in. Um, it's not embroidered on. It's texture rather than colour. Um, but it's really pretty. I'll try try again and see if you can get... I think you can get a little sense that there's something here. But um, anyway, it's really pretty in person. I'm sorry at this point here because the fabric did say fuchsia. And I would say this is not pink enough to be fuchsia. But it is a nice colour and I will wear it. And I think it will be a lovely light summer top. So there's that. And then I've got, it was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. I've got some birthday fabric. I had a little bit of money and I bought some birthday fabric. So this is a double gauze. I think it is a Nanny Eero double gauze, but again, the links will be below. And there's just, I mean, is there anything prettier than that? It's, you know, summer, it's garden, it's flowers, it's bluebirds. It's just adorable. And I think it's possible that this will be a similar lightweight summer top. I don't think I've got enough for a dress. I don't want it to be a skirt. I think this is going to be, again, a lightweight summer top that I'm going to love wearing. I just, the colours are so pretty. Um, the fabric is light because it's a double gauze. It's, I mean, I'm just going to hold it up and see how transparent it is. Again, it is a little bit transparent, so I might line it a little bit. The pattern I'm thinking of has a facing here. And so the easiest way, I think, to line it, because it doesn't need lining at the back or in the sleeves, is just to extend that facing to cover more of the front. Um, or even, you know, the whole of the front, again, if, you, if that seems to work. And then, um, and I'll just do that in a plain white muslin or something like that. So that's that. And then I've got three different patterns in this fabric. This was from, I remember these, were from Lamazi Fabrics. And she had got some fabrics in from, I think, an Australian fabric designer whose name is Narida Hansen. And these are all cotton sateen. So this is red and pink gingham. I just love it. I love the scale of this. And my plan for this is that it's going to be a skirt and it's going to be a pleated skirt where I fold the pleats like this and then the pink just pops out further on. Let me see if I can hold that. Maybe I'll do it on this one here. So you fold the pleats, you use the checks to mark your pleating lines and then the sort of pink uh, peeks out from underneath the pleat, something like that. I need to work out exactly how I'm going to do that, but I think that will be really fun. And I think that will be just a lovely, swishy, knee length -ish, above just above the knee, something like that, summer skirt. Um, I think, yeah, I really like that. And then two other fabrics um, from that same range, again, both cotton sateen, and I think I'm going to put these together to make a dress. And I think this will probably be the bodice of the dress, this repeating rainbow, slightly thicker, slightly thinner. Um, they're sort of like their brush strokes, really. They're not, you know, there's nothing in there that is um, straight line, rigid edges, and they're just gorgeous. And then this, which is um, just beautiful, sort of slightly geometric y, but I don't know. I don't know how you describe this pattern, but I love it. And it's got all the colours in it. And that, I think, would just be beautiful as a sort of flowing skirt. And I think those two will actually work quite well together. I was a bit kind of, I don't know if I want the big fabric pattern over the whole dress, over a whole dress. But I like it a lot with this sort of um, stripey thing. So I think I have a pattern in mind for that, but I'm not certain. And I probably won't make it till later in the summer anyway. Um, but I think that'll be really gorgeous to wear. So that is, I think, everything I was going to talk to you about this time. Um, it's been really fun. I'm really glad to be back YouTubing. I hope you'll uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I hope you give me a thumbs up. Please put in the comments if you've got anything that you'd like to ask about, uh, anything that you've seen in the background or off to the edges or that I've hinted at but not talked about that you'd like to hear about. Um, I'd love to know um, if you do 
multiple kinds of crafts. Uh, what crafts you do and which are your favourites? Um, do you have crafts that you do at different times of day or in different places or when your head is in a different kind of space? There are things that I can do. There are times when I can do this sort of pretty plain sock knitting but there's no way I could be working on my complicated crochet blanket, for example. Um, there's some kinds of dressmaking that I can do when I'm not absolutely at 100%, and then there's other times where I'm like, I'm not risking this unless I'm completely uh, sure that I know what I'm doing all the time. So uh, tell me that, and I will be back. Um, I'm hoping to be back probably every couple of weeks. I think, well, we'll see. I don't know that necessarily I have enough progress every week. Uh, to share with you but maybe I will but I, I'm going to aim to be back in two weeks uh, and hopefully by then at least I will have finished a sock uh, I might have got a little bit further with the crochet and I'm going to make myself have done some embroidery so that I can um, uh, show you that it really is in progress there may be some dressmaking that I'll have done there may be some other things as